welcome to Super Bale Sews. My name's Sarah. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to my plans for autumn and winter sewing. So anyone who has been following me for a little while will have seen that I've been prepping for like wedding, wedding, wedding. Um, and my wedding was two weeks ago and suddenly I got back and I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. What do I want to sew? I've had a week of sort of being half at work and half not at work. And I thought I'd sew loads, but I actually have just tried to plan some things. So I thought I would share with you some of my ideas. So just before anyone asks, um, the jumper I'm wearing is a toaster sweater um, with, I've doubled the depth of the um, neckband just to make it a bit more snuggly. Um, and I have been wearing this non-stop, non-stop. Um, it is part of my favorite cozy outfit at the moment. Um, this dress is uh, a By Hand London Lucy dress made of Duchess satin um, that I made ages ago. So what was my process when I came back and suddenly thought, what am I going to do? Having had so much focus to suddenly have none, I tried to take the week to work out what things I have been enjoying wearing, things that I think I will actually wear a lot because like this dress for example is gorgeous but there aren't that many occasions to wear it so I'm trying to avoid making things that I'm not going to wear as often because I already have lots of nice special occasion dresses and things like um there may be one in the pipeline for Christmas which I'll talk to you about later but generally speaking I'm looking more for things that I can wear for work or that I'm going to be wearing in sort of downtime um and one of the things that I came away from our mini moon realising was that this outfit, which I'll put a full picture of the outfit here, but it's the toaster sweater in a nice cable knit and then a self-drafted gathered skirt um, is something really wearable for this time of year. Like I could wear it into to school. Um, I could wear it to meet a friend of coffee. I could just wear it around the house. Um, and so I've decided that I needed to make like another version of this outfit basically so another skirt and another sweater which can then be chopped and changed together so for this i went to fabric godmother um and i found the loveliest cable knit so this cable knit i got from um minerva.com and i've seen i don't know if it's exactly the same it looks very similar but there are quite a few websites who have this chunky sort of fisherman's knit um, so I wanted something a bit different and I saw on Fabric Godmother that they have these um, cable knit fabrics that have come from Italy and it arrived today. How pretty is that? Sorry, I haven't unfolded it. Um, so you will see, I don't know how good the light is because I'm basically blocking it. I'll put it like that so you can see the pattern better. It's got this sort of very classic braided pattern. Um, it's in a lovely cobalt blue. Again, apologies for the lighting. It's dark outside because I was working today and it gets dark at like four. Um, so uh, yeah, it's I would say it's a bit lighter than this one. Um, yeah, you can slightly see through, but I think when it was, if you had a garment behind it, I don't think you'd really notice that. Um, and yeah, it's this lovely cobalt blue colour and it's just got the same design the whole way down, knitted design. So I thought a blue jumper, who can go wrong? The other colour that I sort of love in the autumn at the moment is this darker green, but my school jumper was dark green, so I like cannot wear jumpers in that colour, um, because to me it just will always look like my school jumper. Um, so I'm going to make another toaster sweater, it'll be pretty much exactly the same as this one, um, but I will probably omit the waistband, which I don't mind on this one, but I think it actually sort of doesn't need it, so instead I'm going to just slightly extend the length but not have the waistband at the bottom and then the fabric I have selected to make the skirt is um I think it was a fabric godmother original print or one of their revived um vintage prints but from a little while ago um let me get this right around and it is this tiled um navy floral now you will see again the light picks it up there's this sort of lurex thread so this is in like a silver color i actually have this fabric in a different colorway which is the i think it's mustard background i want to say so um the navy parts are mustard instead um 
but that's a bit more summery whereas this I feel like I could wear in the autumn and I actually think because so you get like three of those big tiles across the width of the fabric um, and it's obviously a really large scale print but I think for a print like this you want to try and find patterns that have quite big pieces so that you're not constantly chopping up that tiled effect um and the gathered skirt that I've made already was I used the full width of the fabric um and I just cut it into four lengths I think for this one I might do it in three panels rather than four but still use the full width of the fabric so it won't be quite as full as my star celestial skirt but it might be a little bit longer I'm thinking like maybe in a above the ankle situation um but I think with the large print it'll be really nice um now this is currently on sale I mean look at that so pretty where the lyrics threads are picked out um it's in all colorways it's currently on sale on the fabric on the website which is sort of what drew me to it um so it is 7.98 a meter I think so less than eight pounds a meter um yeah and I just thought it's sort of interesting and pretty and again because of the lyrics it's like you could dress it up if you wanted to or you could have it with a sweater and dress it down um so that's going to be my sort of new outfit so I'm hoping I can chop and change the skirts and the sweaters with each other and that will just sort of be an easy go-to outfit for work and other things through the autumn and winter um so yeah both of those fabrics from Fabric Godmother I also have for a while had my eye on some needle cord from Jenny Stitches now she had it in this colorway I think it was terracotta on the website and she made the most gorgeous shirt dress from it and in my mind I always think of cord as being like a bit heavier duty but it actually worked so well for this dress um and then after that I just kept I was like craving a needle cord dress now unfortunately for me she got the terracotta back into stock when I was getting married and I missed it sold out again um and I'd commented on one of her YouTube videos saying, do you think you'll get this back at some point? Like, because I, I didn't know if, you know, people move may already be moving on to making for Christmas. And like, I didn't know if she'd get it back. And because Jenny is an absolute saint, she messaged me and said, um, how much do you need? And I said how much I was like, I want to make a dress. So I want X amount thinking she's going to say I've got 0.6 meters left or something. And she said, oh, there was someone who had asked me to put some aside for them to collect in store um and they never collected it and now they've said they don't want it so she was like do you want some of that and then I'll put the rest on the website um and I was like yes please so um yeah she got it in it was in the post that day and now I have it again sorry it's not none of this has been washed it's literally straight out of the package arrived yesterday um again the light's not the best I'll do it like this so you can sort of see the the light picking up the little ribs maybe um now for anyone who hasn't worked with cord before obviously needle cord has the, the ribs are very very fine and so I think that's what makes the fabric a little lighter weight um previously I think the other cords I've worked with have been eight whale cord and then I think recently I used a four and a half 4.5 whale cord so remember the whales uh relate to how many ribs there are per inch so the higher the number the smaller the ribs are if that makes sense um so obviously this fabric then turned up and I was thinking oh my gosh I was gonna make a dress don't know what to make um I've decided against a shirt dress because I have absolutely loads and um I think I really liked the one that Jenny made but the the sizing isn't very inclusive so and the shirt dresses I have, they don't quite have the silhouette that I would want. So I did a little Google search of what we're seeing out there in needle cord dresses, which I do sometimes when I have a fabric and I'm not quite sure what to do. I'll sort of see what shops are making and then decide what looks nice. Um, and there were a couple of silhouettes. So shirt dresses were coming up. Pinafore dresses obviously were coming up. Um, there were also quite a few that had that looked a bit like the Stylark Bell dress. I'll try and put some pictures here. Um, but again, with that, I was like, well, I can't wear that to work. It's, it always, I love that dress, like, I, and I like how it looks on me, but it's like quite low cut, so I couldn't really wear it to work. So I thought, oh. 
um and i spend most of my life at work in the winter so uh and then i saw a couple uh one i think was toast at toast and one was another shop but i think the toast one was almost 200 pounds and the one at the other shop was like 400 pounds or something and i thought i could use the um emporia patterns penelope dress to make this so it was with the v-neck big sleeves um and just quite a simple skirt and that's something that i could wear to work because it's quite a like high v-neck it's not one of the really like low 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 here's all my cleavage v-necks um and yeah so that's what i'm gonna make and i think it'll actually be really cute because obviously even though it's quite lightweight for a, a cord um it's still a cord so it has a bit of structure so i think it will hold the sleeves nicely um and i think it'll actually be a really nice autumn dress and i don't think i look bad in like oranges look at my coloring i remember going for a costume fitting once um for something in which i was playing a russian peasant um and and this one i was back at music college and they had this burnt orange jacket that they'd been trying to get on everybody like everyone who went in they got in that jacket the jacket ended up being my costume i'll see if i can find a picture of my burnt orange jacket um and they were like I, I think they were probably lying to me just to persuade me to be like yeah i'll wear it but they were like oh my god you're the first person who can pull off burnt orange and i felt like do you know what i mean i was like check me out in burnt orange don't think i've ever worn it since um like that color <laughs> but um yeah i do i think i i quite like wearing orange um so those are some of my plans so those are my sort of wearable fabrics i've ordered since i've got back which are very much going to go straight into cutting out and into making things i can wear for work in my spare time when we were in scotland on our mini moon i did go to a fabric shop me and nathan went for a little stroll uh, a place called fabric focus in edinburgh um i always make the mistake going into a fabric shop and not having a plan uh, so i've tried to come up with plans for all of these now i got two things nathan got one that obviously i'm going to make into something for him um one of the fabrics nathan sort of i liked and then he persuaded me to get um but i might put it on hold to use next year and i'll explain to you why so first up one that i'm definitely going to use this year is this gorgeous stretch velvet now again i mean look at the color sorry that i'm balancing this way it's because the light is here so it picks up a bit better it's this beautiful like peacock blue um now they didn't have very much of this i think i've got oh I don't, about a meter and a half um they did it for me for slightly less because there's a bit of um like the pile is a little bit damaged where it was getting to the end of the roll um but i decided to take it anyway because i just like the color so much and i've decided i think i'm going to make like a cropped t-shirt again that i can sort of wear with high-waisted trousers or um skirts or something like that but you know it's like a really simple relaxed silhouette but because of the fabric it feels dressy so um and that's again a really quick sew so that's what i'm gonna do with that and i think i could get that quite easily out of one and a half meters um if there's enough if i'm cutting and i'm thinking i've got space for this then i might make the sleeves i might do something like the Ad adrian is it friday pattern company adrian blouse sleeves like slightly bigger um and i was thinking of maybe making the adrian blouse because you can get that out of not much fabric but because it's very open in the neckline it's like i've made a few of those and again in the i made a stretch velvet one last year which i loved but because it's so open in the neckline i actually don't wear it that much um yeah because it's cold so yeah now the one nathan talked me into buying which i think i might save till next year is this wool coating which i mean is amazing just have a look at the colors in that and it was i can't remember the price but it was really quite cheap so i was sort of saying to him like oh, that's actually a really good price for coating wool um and he i mean top husband points talking me into fabric not talking me out of it um but yeah so it's got this sort of the the main background is like black and red and then you have this check over the top in sort of rainbow colors it's nice isn't it so i mean the options for this are to make a coat but i do already have a coat on the agenda for this year um or i did think maybe there was talk before of making a little pinafore 
and that turned into my Upton dress, which definitely became more of a dress than a pinafore. Um, so I could do something like that, could do a little skirt jacket set. But again, I'm thinking, will I wear it? Could wear it to work, I suppose. I don't know. What do you think? What would you be making with that fabric? But I, I in my mind, that's not on my going to cut soon pile. That's going back into the, the stash for a bit. Now, the fabric Nathan picked was this cord. So again, I don't know what you call this colour. It's They might have called it a petrol blue. I don't know if it is quite a petrol blue, but um, this again, it's like a jumbo cord. Now, he has seen my dungarees that I made in Scotland and he's decided that he wants a pair of giant man dungarees. Now, Nathan is over six foot tall, so... <laughs> We're not messing around with making these giant dungarees. I did say to him, are you sure you want dungarees? Because, like, I could just make you trousers. Um, but he's really insistent he wants dungarees. So, um, and I think he'll look very cute. And then we can have our matching dungarees. And it's just, like, married life in our corduroy dungarees. Um, but it's mostly just because getting dungarees that are going to fit. A, there's such a smaller selection of patterns available for men. Also, he's tall and broad, so it's like, it's just finding something where the fit is going to be right. And as I've discovered with my um, Tilly and the Buttons dungarees, it's like, the fit is slight, I'm quite short in the body, but I'm curvy. And it's like, just getting it to sit in the right place where you really, you want dungarees to be comfy, right? You want to be able to sort of be active in them. And so I don't want to make him them and then the fit be so off that they're not wearable. So I've said I'm going to make him them as a Christmas present, um, but the search is on. I know there is one, um, what's his name? Is it Norris Danta Ford? The American guy who's married to Mimi G, I believe. I think he has released a dungaree pattern. Don't know how tall he is. Not sure, but I'm going to have a look. I mean, men's patterns are just because, you know, you're used to most female sewing patterns are like maybe drafted to like, five six ish seems to be the most common height that they're drafted to um with men's patterns i've got no idea what the average height would be that they draft to not got a clue so anyway so those are the fabrics that we bought in edinburgh and then we had to buy a whole new suitcase because we bought so much stuff um but yeah so that's that now what are things i'm planning to sew uh between now and christmas from fabrics that i already own now, one of the projects, and I don't have a fabric here for this because I can't decide what to do, is the Fabric Godmother Peony Dress. Um, I bought this pattern as soon as it was released. I actually have it right here. Um, and I mean, I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. They're doing like a, a peony dress day where if you post a picture of your peony dress, you'll go in for some, they've got really good prizes, like big prizes. Um, I don't think I'll get it made for then. And the reason I say that is because, A, this is a very busy time for me work-wise, um, which is why I'm trying to pick more simple things to make um, so that I can actually get them done. Um, but also, I think fitting the bodice is going to take a bit of time on this. I've spoken to a few people who have made it who are plus size, and they have all said you'll definitely need to twirl it. Some people had to twirl it twice. Um... The main note seems to be that there will you will definitely need to do a, a full bust adjustment, which is a common fit thing for me, so that's not too surprising. Um, but yeah, there aren't loads of plus size. There are a few really gorgeous versions, but there aren't loads of plus size ones on the hashtag, which makes me wonder. It had made me wonder, like, oh, is the fit like too hard? Because um, I think so many people love this silhouette of dress, so it's not that people won't want to wear it. It's just, or maybe people think it's going to be too hard. I don't know. So anyway, one of my things that I want to do between now and the end of the year is start twirling this dress with a view of then making it. Because I think once you get it, it'll be such a good pattern to have. Um, I've got an, a wedding in May. It's my only, only wedding next year um, at the moment. So um, I've got a wedding in May. And so I'm thinking, do I make a peony dress for that? Maybe. So um that gives me a bit of time, doesn't it? So peony dress is going to be a work in progress. Keep an eye out. Now, I've had a look through some of the fabrics I have. Um, some of these you'll have seen recently. Some of these you might not have done. So one of the ones that I'm definitely going to use is this cotton jersey, which is from Jenny Stitches. Um, I'm the worst person at showing fabric in the world. Um, right, hang on. There we go. Right. 
So again, I'm going to hold it like this so you can get a bit more of the light. So it's a green background. It's got these cute little deer on it and little berries. Um, it's a slightly lighter green. It's actually a tiny, it looks a tiny bit like a mild green, but only very subtly. And it also has, I don't know if you can see this, but it has these little black, like, um, leaves, like little vines in between. Um, I love this. I love cotton jersey. Last year, Jenny always gets really nice ones for Christmas. Um, last year I bought, there was this one that had pugs on in Christmas hats uh, and I made pyjamas. Um, <laughs> and this one I like because it is festive, obviously it's red and green. And I mean, the deer are, they're definitely deer, not reindeer, but it's a vibe. Do you know what I mean? There's a festive vibe, but it's not strictly a Christmas jersey. The print is not like Christmas, Christmas. So again, I struggle with these animal print ones because I just, I don't know, it doesn't say dress to me. It always says loungewear. Um, or I suppose I can make a t-shirt. Um, but in my mind, I'm thinking pyjamas. I just, I'm just thinking something that I'm going to be wearing around the house. Or I could make like a daytime top and then I could make like a night dress. Do you know what I mean? So like a big giant t-shirt to wear in bed or whatever. But um, yeah, it's so pretty. I'm just stroking it now. You can't even see it. Who is this video even for? I'm just stroking fabric that's not even in shot. Um, <laughs> so then um, the next fabric that keeps jumping out at me is this. So this is um, a plissé, which is like a pleated, um, I'm going to say la, la, me, la me, I don't know how you say it, fabric that I bought a while ago from Rainbow Fabrics. And this was with a view of making a party dress for my wedding, which I ended up not doing because I was so obsessed with my actual dress. And I thought, why bother? Um, so now I have this and I have absolutely loads of it. Now, um, so Adele at Sofa Serenity, she made a really nice um, gown, I think for the dressmaker's ball, I think, um, out of this exact fabric. Um, it was a silhouette that I wouldn't wear because I need to wear a bra, basically. So it was like, it's had sort of like a halter neck. Um, it was very, very pretty. Um, it wasn't a halter neck, it was like a high neck and then cut like this. So sort of like the um, Wilder gown, if you do it sleeveless. Um, but she's recently changed it into a skirt. Now this fabric does say to me, Christmassy skirt. And that would be an easy make, like easy peasy, because you literally don't have to do anything with this fabric. You just sew some elastic on and it's done. Um, but I have a lot of it and it's almost, I think, sorry, that's Nala trying to get in. Right, sorry about that. Nala has come in, there are fireworks outside she's scratching up a storm behind me um but we're heading out for dinner so i've got to get on with filming um so hopefully she's not too disruptive and i might show you a sneak peek of her later if she's still here um yeah so the easy thing to do would be to make a skirt just add the elastic and it's done but i do have quite a bit of it i think i've got at least four meters and there's part of me that's like oh is this going to be the thing where a concert comes up or like some sort of event and I think I could have made a gown so it could become a skirt another option would be to make like a little two-piece situation so it looks like a dress um I don't know again I'm gonna pop some inspiration pictures here there's someone called I can't remember what her name was but she was on um I'm absolutely terrible I can't remember the name of any of these shows that show where designers it's like, oh, what is it called? I think it's the one with Tan France on. Is it Next in Fashion or something? It's one of those shows where like established designers compete. And they had a designer, a British designer, who she makes all these dresses where it's all about like pleats. And she has this gold dress. I'll see if I can get a picture of it up there. But um, I was sort of thinking maybe something like that. Or I found another picture of a dress when I was looking how to use it for my wedding party dress. I'd found some designs, but they're definitely much more involved. So we will see. I might go simple and something that I'll wear a lot, or I might save it, not for this Christmas, and I might make it into a gown down the line. Let's see. Um, now, the other couple of projects I have here are things I've already talked to you about. So um, Minerva Brown Ambassador Project. I'm going to make the paper cut patterns and overcoat. I have this lovely boiled wool, and it's going to be lined with these little cherries. Um, they're not cherries, are they? Winter berries. So that's high up on the agenda. Um, I also am toying with making 
the Tilly and the Buttons um, Sully jacket with my fleece lined um, jumbo cord. Not 100%. Um, I'm normally not into boxy jackets, but I've seen a couple of versions of that, um, like the cropped version, and it seems fairly simple silhouette. Um, and again, I just think it's one of those good layering pieces. Um, and this fabric's super bulky, so I sort of want to try and get it made up ASAP into something I'll actually wear. Um, we're spending Christmas in the Northeast this year, so I'll have opportunities to wear warm clothes. Uh, yeah, so... Was there anything else I was going to talk to you about? Oh, the only other things on my list that I can't currently show you. I'm going to make the Sew Over It Porsche dress, which was kindly gifted to me um, by Sew Over It, which is their knit dress with a little twist detail um, in a stretch velvet. So, again, I'm hoping that will be a dress that I can maybe wear when I'm doing Christmas, like, um, not concerts that I'm singing in, but, like, when my choir are doing a Christmas concert, I could wear that, or when there's a Christmas concert at school. I'm hoping it'll be one of those, so not like a dress I'd wear for normal work, but when I'm doing like posh evening at work, it'll be that like work enough appropriate, but a bit more jazzy. So that fabric hasn't arrived yet. Um, again, I'm getting that from Minerva, um, which would be great. And there was something else. Oh, and then the Hudson pants, True Bias Hudson pants. I've had these in one of my project bags for ages. They're just going to be plain black. Um, and that's all about being cosy around the house. So just some plain black ones. I have made them in all sorts of patterns. And I wear them in the house a lot. But then if I have to pop out to a shop, I always feel like I have to change because they look a bit like pyjamas. So I'm making um, some plain black ones, which again will be for around the house. But like if I need to pop out, I could sort of wear them. And they'll go with all of the prints and stuff that I have for tops. So... As you can tell from my plans, they have been a bit haphazard, a bit thrown together because I just need some focus. But as you can tell, I'm sort of focusing on like cosy and workwear. So things that I'm really going to wear, I'm trying to be more practical. That's why the gold fabric, although it cries Christmas at me and the right occasion might come up and I might go, no, I need that to be a skirt or I need that to be a dress. I will probably save until I have an event in mind. Um, because ultimately I just want things that I can throw on and wear. Uh, I found in the summer, I do have a wardrobe full of summer dresses, which is great. Um, but sometimes I didn't have, you know, there were times when I was working seven days a week and I needed more, I needed more things I could rotate for my work wardrobe basically. So that's where I'm going to think now, like I need things that day to day I can wear. And unfortunately for me at the moment, that means at work. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. I have a few other vlogs planned. As you know, anyone who was here last year, I'm a musician. Work goes absolutely mad leading up to Christmas. Like it's nuts. I'm not going to do Vlogmas this year um, just because I enjoyed it last year. But I actually think it's a very crowded field and... Because there's so much other stuff going on, I think I can give more quality if I just make a few vlogs on things that I actually want to rather than trying to come up with something every day. Um, so, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to having more content coming at you very soon. Um, and you take care of yourself and I'll see you for the next one. All right. Bye, guys.